we're going to try to solve this problem here using conservation of energy, work energy theorem, the one basic equation that we can apply to the majority of situations in, uh, in this chapter. It doesn't work for every situation, but it works really well in this case. So we've got uh, tubing, riders slide down snow-covered slopes. To get to the top, uh, a rider on his tube, they're pulled at a constant speed by a tow rope, right? So we've got an angle uphill like this. We know that this uh, distance, we actually don't know that based on is how much work is done by the friction during the ascent of a 30 meter high. That's this is 30 meters. And this is 120 meters long. Now the tuber, if we, person riding that tube, they start, you know, down here. They've got gravity down. They've got a normal force up. They've got the tension from the tow rope. And they've got some friction acting that way. So that gives me some ideas of the forces that are acting here because we're being asked about friction. And so friction's a force. It's going to do some work in this case. And we need to figure out how much work that was done in pulling that up. And we got a couple ways to do that. Well, if we set up the work energy equation, and we'll start up here, we have that all the energy it has at the bottom there, plus the work done on the way up, will equal the energy that it has at the top. So this is where it initially starts, and then it ends up up here. The velocity is constant. It has the same V the whole way up. So constant speed. So what we have when we figure all this out, we have there's a kinetic energy initial. There's a potential energy of gravity initial. I'm actually going to call this y equals 0. And this is y equals 30. Uh, springs, we got to consider there aren't any springs here. There's going to be work from the friction. And there's going to be work from the tension. This rope is pulling it up. And all that is going to equal the kinetic energy final plus the potential energy of gravity final. It gets to the top. That's it. Now, I'm treating friction as something that does work. Sometimes you can often treat it, and people do, as a thermal energy at the end. It's either doing work on the way up or it's becoming thermal energy, one or the other. I'm going to leave it as work. All right, looking through these, <coughs> I can tell that based on my selection of the y the heights, that we got no potential energy here because that's y. It does say it's a constant speed, so I know that this kinetic energy and that kinetic energy at the end are equal because it's the same speed. You might recall kinetic energy, it's going to be 1 half mv squared there. Then we can add in that friction. That's going to be the force of friction, the distance it moves, and the cosine of the angle between the friction and the distance it moved. The tension will be that force of tension. I'm going to call that ft the distance it goes, and the cosine of the angle that they make with each other. And that's going to equal 1 half mv squared plus mgy final. I didn't, that's my final, that's my initial. Now I know this velocity and that velocity are the same. These values are going to cancel out. So the work by friction is here. Now. I made a small, an, a common mistake is I just want to find the work of friction. How much work is done by friction? That's this value. I don't need that. I can just call that the work of friction. 
I don't need to separate it into the force and the distance. So converting that back to work of friction and rewriting this equation, I've got the work of friction plus the work of the tension. I'm going to leave that here. That's Ft d cosine theta is going to equal mgy final. And that's because the only reason that went up the hill is because these things did work. So that work of friction is going to be mgy final minus that force of tension, the distance it traveled, and the angle, the cosine of the angle between the force and that distance. Let's sub everything in. We got the mass is 72. G is 9.8. These are positives. It's the magnitude of G. The Y is 30 minus the tension is 370. The distance up the ramp is 120. And this tension and this distance are in the same direction. So that's a cosine of 0, which will be 1. So I have this. 72 times 9.8 times 30. And we get uh, an error because I typed something in wrong. 72 times 9.8 times 30. 21,168 minus 370 times 120 times 1 is 4,400, 44,400. So let's subtract those. And we get a negative 23,232 joules of work done by friction. Now that's negative. Does that make sense? Let's check it out. It moved up, but the friction was down. That's 180. That's negative work. So that makes sense. So I'm going to go with that. So back some reminders. This equation you can use for a lot of stuff. And you figure out what energies you have at the beginning, what works are done, what energies you have at the end. Now we're finding the work. Remember what you're actually looking for, right? I forgot. We're finding the work of friction. And I substituted in the force, the distance, the cosine theta. I could have figured all that out using Newton's laws. But I decided to just use the energy and find the work of friction. So I didn't need friction, force, distance, and cosine theta. I just needed to leave that as work of friction. And that work of friction equaled the work by the tension. There I needed to put in the tension, force, the distance, the cosine. And that equaled my gravitational potential at the end. The kinetics got canceled because there was no change in kinetic energy. There was some at the beginning, but since the speed was the same, it had the same one at the end. Uh, manipulate the equation for work friction, plug in the numbers, get our answer. There we go. Thanks.